What a breath of fresh air that instead of the latest car crash and, and uh, shooting, you have an inspiring story of workers in a rural community fighting for their dignity and justice. In better news, though, Starbucks workers are continuing to rack up W's. Uh, you'll remember that workers, yeah. in, workers in Birmingham won the first union election at a Starbucks in Alabama a couple weeks ago. Well, just this past week, workers at the Memphis location where seven workers were fired won their election in a landslide 11 to 3, as was predicted by the fired workers right here on the Valley Labor Report. <laughs> that same day, the union won elections in 11 other cities. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, the Memphis 7 had their hearing yesterday, so we'll be looking for the results of that and sharing that with you as we go forward. Um Real quick, one fun statistic that I think uh, you're touching on is that – and I just heard that this morning on my way here doing some prep. And if you look at the number of union elections in the United States, we have already – where we're at at the end of May is where we were at last year in October. Wow. So we are several months ahead of the pace of last year. Granted, you know, it's still lower than it needs to be. Uh, but I think being several months ahead in terms of the number of elections filed is thanks in large part to Starbucks Workers United and, and the massive organizing way we've seen there. So we, we have to give a lot of credit to those folks and what they're doing to inspire labor organizers and activists all over the country and, and industry after industry. Yeah, it, it's it's very cool. And right here in Alabama, we've got another store filing for election. Workers at a Scottsboro location filed for election last week. Scottsboro, for people that are not familiar with Alabama, is a pretty conservative little town. <laughs> I, would I would say, say. very conservative. <laughs> um, very conservative. Not town. a lot of diversity. No. It's it's you know white Appalachian kind of community. Uh, very... I ran my fastest 5K in Scottsboro. I don't know if you know that little bit of trivia. No, I didn't. Yeah. Uh, I know about the unclaimed baggage center. The unclaimed That's baggage kind of the center is fame. cool as – we're not on the radio. It's cool as shit, man. Go to the unclaimed baggage system uh, or the unclaimed baggage uh, center. It's really Scottsboro cool. Scottsboro is a, it's an interesting place because it used to be heavily uh, industrial. There was a lot of textile industry in that community. But, of course, as with so many other communities over the decades, uh, most of the industry has shut down and shipped out. And so it's a, it's a community that's in decline, really, uh, in terms of population, in terms of employment opportunities. You know, what little bit I know from people in that area is, you know, if you want a good job, quote unquote, good job, uh, you're probably going to Huntsville to find it or Chattanooga. You're. You're not going to find a lot of options there. Uh, so I'll say all that just to kind of put it in context. Of, and this is in Jackson County. Um, and so we're talking the northeastern part of Alabama, uh, kind of our side of Lookout Mountain. You go up the mountain and you can get to Chattanooga on the Tennessee side. Uh, so it's a it's beautiful country, very conservative religious area. Certainly not the kind of place you would expect uh, to be the second union at Starbucks in the state. And so I, I love that about it, that, you know, that's you, you talked earlier about the miners and, and how kind of there's been some unexpected support. You know, we, we're, we're supposed to think if we believe the media narratives that like environmentalists and coal miners are at each other's throats. And so seeing... Energy Alabama and Sierra Club support the coal miners on strike. It's really, it's a beautiful thing. And I think this is another beautiful thing uh, to see a community that, you know, we would stereotype as kind of a uh, very far right, um, hostile to unions. Here they are popping up with a, a union election. I, I think yeah. that's beautiful. Yeah. And the Emily Mosner for WHNT 
interviewed a couple of the workers and she and the and the person that I've clipped up for this interview um, she mentions that let's go ahead and play that clip from an interview by Emily Mosner for WHNT people that are going to say like we're just baristas like we're hourly workers we don't deserve more than what we're getting now um, please think about the fact that some of us have kids and like we have school to go to and like we need this job to be able to provide for ourselves like be supportive of us pushing for better for ourselves. I know that there is, you know, saying union is a scary word, um, but it's not something to be scared of. We just want to be able to provide for ourselves and for our families. For the- that's awesome. Yeah. That's that's great. And, and to see such an interview on local news, uh, because I think... How often do you get rank-and-file unionizing workers interviewed on local news... Um, talking about why they're unionizing. That's so cool. And sharing that union is not a dirty word. There's mm-hmm. nothing to be scared of. And hey, by the way, we're real people with kids right. and bills and real lives. Right. Uh, that's that's great. And that's just one of the other great things about this happening in a community like that is to get the word out to other folks. Mm-hmm. Because I imagine there were probably people sitting in Athens and Decatur and Huntsville and Madison thinking, well, hell, if they can do it in Scottsboro, why not here? That's what happened with Scott. In, in one of the other interviews, they said that they were inspired by Birmingham. They were like, oh, well, if Birmingham can do it, I can do it. How many more people are going to look at Scottsboro and say, if Scottsboro can do it, I can do it, right? Absolutely. That's just so it's so awesome. So I'm really looking forward to, to elections popping up all over the state. Yeah, and, and I think... Uh, You said Austin maybe mentioned this in the chat earlier about local news just being fear mongering and and gun violence and Mm. car Mm -hmm. crashes. And that is so true. Uh, Local TV news is is mostly a joke. And that's not any disrespect to some of the folks that I've worked with personally over the years in these stations. I know they're doing the best they can and under their conditions, but. Um, Which yeah, their what conditions a, are really crazy. Like they're bad. If you ever talk, they to, need to unionize. Yeah, I mean, no kidding, no kidding. The reporters in Huntsville make uh, significantly less than I do. <laughs> the pay is not good. The working conditions are crap. Um, and that's you know before you even get to like editorial aspects and the content that they're right. asked to produce. Um, so, yeah, what a breath of fresh air that instead of the latest car crash and, and uh, mugging and mm-hmm. shooting, that you have an inspiring story of workers in a rural community fighting back, fighting for their dignity and justice and for each other. Great news. Incredibly, incredibly cool. You just saw a clip from the Valley Labor Report. We are live every Saturday morning from 9.30 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. And we pride ourselves on keeping all of our content free to everybody so that we can talk to as many working folks as possible. If you support the work that we're doing, you think that it's important, you think that it's good, then consider making a monthly contribution to the project. And you can do that on our website, tvlr.fm. 